thanks, Andrew. And I would just want to plus one what you just said in terms of just how movies influence or some of our biases. I would want to say even storybooks, what we read to our children, like when we talk about the you know, the damsel in distress and the prince charming comes to rescue her. Is that what we are teaching our kids? And I do see a change now in how our uh, movies and our stories are changing around just getting gender equality, even in the storybook. So really like that call out, which you said that, yes, what we see really frames and influences our biases, our thinking. So not surprising when we go to the corporate world, we have obviously the leaders who are also influenced by those biases. And a lot of those biases play at every level. And we are all human beings. I think biases are there. I think it's critical that we are aware of our biases and we have approaches to manage those biases. Some of the most common biases which I've seen, say at a talent session or a perf session or even a regular business session, the most common biases is like a stereotyping bias or affinity bias, like people want to see people like themselves. So they want to start looking at people if they want to give projects who's like me, speaks like me, from my education background in a global company, it could also be transcend transcending culture, somebody from a similar background, like similar race. So those are the kind of biases we typically see coming out in any kind of a forum, any kind of format. But I think what I have seen uh, is critical is to be aware. So what we typically do is we make sure that we do regular bias busting sessions with leaders to make sure, hey, do you know that when you said something like this, it showed like you had a bias for somebody, a situational bias, like in the pandemic, uh, is it top of mind? You did not see somebody and that person was not in your kind of reference set and you really forgot because you did not meet that person over a water cooler conversation which you were having perhaps in the pre-pandemic time. So top of mind continues to be a bias we are watching out now, especially as we return to work, like how does that play out? And just being aware of it, calling that out, being brave to say, Mr. X, you just said that, looks like you know the bias is playing out in a decision which you're making, is has been very helpful for me. So I think leaders definitely are now more aware that biases can play in these situations, but how as a leader, and not only the people leader, I think any leader in the room can call out that bias to the leaders has been an important way to bust the bias, if I could say, uh, in many forums. And I've seen people being very self-aware now. So I think I've been fortunate to work with leaders who are authentic and are able to step back and say, yeah, looks like that is a bias. Let me think of this differently. Let me frame differently. Let me use the right choice of words. So typically for women, when we're giving projects, we ask questions like, oh, how old would she be? Would she be going on maternity soon? Those questions are not allowed to be asked because they are filled with biases. We do not need to know what's the age of the person, what background they are from. We just talk about their skills. So get the conversation back to skills, talk about the PDP conversations rather than how old are they, are they married, et cetera, et cetera, which used to be a lot of these conversations earlier. But in the last couple of years, I've seen the change happening where people are focusing more on skills and deliveries and what they are making impact at rather than how old they are and when are they getting married.